Also bring you special guest music. Ministration by Dan Lewitton. GCK Live from Africa in miniature. Cameroon and straight to the world via satellite and all our social media platforms. You are flying there. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Fly with us. pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for the opportunity to be in your presence tonight. We ask that your presence come down in our midst in Jesus' name. Bless everyone that is seated here and as many that will be hearing us anywhere. Lord, we ask that your blessings will flow in Jesus' name. That at the end of meeting tonight, we'll have every cause to glorify your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for having answered us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name for the Lord is good. Let us sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name for the Lord is good. Brethren, sing unto the Lord a joyful song let us praise his name for the lord is good hallelujah sing unto the lord a joyful song let us praise his name for the lord is good sing unto the lord a joyful song let us praise his name for the lord is good praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body shout hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body praise the lord my spirit soul and body shout hallelujah amen amen blessings and glory wisdom thanks given and honor power and mind belong to the lord forever and ever amen singing amen 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 blessings and glory wisdom thanks given and honor power and mind belong to the lord forever and ever amen this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah this is my night of joy my night of joy my night of joy hallelujah 
Tonight is my night of joy, my night of joy, my night of joy. This is my night of joy, the night of joy, a night of joy. Hallelujah. Tonight is the night of joy. The night of joy, the night of joy. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, Says the Lord, this mountain, this mountain must be removed. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain, this mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed by my spirit, says the Lord. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound, Satan. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Demons, I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I shall not be bound. I shall not be bound. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Failure. Bye bye. We are marching into the success city. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Failure, bye bye. We are marching into the success city. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Sickness, bye bye. We are marching into the healing city. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye, sickness. Sickness, bye bye. We are marching into the healing city. Bye bye, sickness. 
Bye bye, sickness. Bye bye. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye, disappointment. Disappointment. Bye bye. We are marching into the appointment city. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye, disappointment. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Failure. Bye bye. We are marching into that success city. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye, failure. Bye bye. God's not. Dead, he's alive. If God's not dead, he's alive. God's not dead, he's alive. I feel him in this church, I feel him in my home. I feel him all over me. He is not dead. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I feel him in my life. I feel him in my home. I feel him all over me. He is not dead. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God is not dead. He is alive. I feel him in this church. I feel him in this place. I feel him all over me the man of calvary he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again jesus of galilee he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again the man of calvary he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again jesus of galilee he has done it before in my life in this place he will do it again God cannot lie, his word must surely come to pass, because he's not him. God is not a man, his word must surely come to pass. He is not a man, because he's not him. God is not a man, his word must surely come to He is not a man. Because he's not him. God is not a liar. His word must surely come to pass. Because he's not a man. His word must surely come to pass in my life. Because he's not him. God is not a man. His word must surely come to He is not a man. Because he's not a man. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me, it is well with us, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. 
It is well with us. It is well with us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe it is well with us. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Jesus, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. The Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, my God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, power, power belong to God, power, power. Power belong to God, power, 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 power belong to God, power. Power belong to God, power, 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 power belong to God, power. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory, 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 hallelujah. Conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. The Lord has conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who gave us the victory. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what we say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today, today. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what we say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. The power, the power, 
the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what may say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. It's power night. Yeah. Solution night. Yeah. Yoke breaking night. Yeah. Something will happen in your life. Yeah. What are you? It's coming your way. Father, we thank you for what you have done already. Lord, we pray the name of Jesus will be mighty in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Nothing impossible in that name. No solution will miss us in that name. I pray you send your power forth with your word tonight in Jesus' name. Move every mountain. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let there be joy in the house tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Mark chapter 7 tonight. We're reading from verse 24 all through to verse 37. Let me select some of the verses for you to understand what we're looking at today. From verse 24, it says, And from this he arose, and he went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would not, would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, whose young daughter, had an unclean spirit had of him and came and fell at his feet. She brought her problem, the problem of the house, the problem of the home, the problem of the daughter unto Christ. Look at the final result in verse 30. In verse 30, and when he was come to her house, he found the devil come out and a daughter laid upon the bed. Peace had come. Amen. Deliverance came. Amen. And calmness came to that daughter. Like the calmness is coming to your house tonight. Amen. And then we're told what happened after that. That he went in verse 31. Again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the sea of Galilee. And were told through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, and they bring unto him one that was dead, and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put a hand upon him. They asked for a favor, and they demanded that Christ will touch the child. And heal the child. He never said no to any request like that. He will not say no to you. Yeah. He will not say no to your family. Yeah. He will not say no to your neighbors. Yeah. Look at the final result. Verse 37. In verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished. And they said. He had done all things well. He had done all things well. Done to speak. That final testimony is the testimony we have concerning Jesus Christ. And anytime you come in encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you really connect with him, that's the final thing you are going to find in your heart and in your spirit and in your life, in your behavior, in your character in your profession, in anything that concerns you, you will have to testify when that thing happens, like it's happening tonight. Amen. He has done all things well. Say that with me. He has done all things well. 
That was the testimony despite the opposition of devils and men in the face of religious and rigid tradition. The testimony still was in spite of all those things, he has done all things well. Confronted with unbelief and ignorance of unbelieving men and sinners, all the same, he has done all things well. Among the impotent, among the incurable, when he touched them, when he had contact with them, the testimony came out, he has done all things well. Over the turbulence of the waves of the sea, of the storm, and the roaring of the sea, at the end of it all, once Christ comes in and he manifests his power, the testimony is over the storm, over the waves, he has done all things well. If in your family there is any turbulence, in your family there is any harassment of the enemy, if in your family tonight there is any storm or any waves, by the time we finish tonight, what's your testimony? He has done all things well. The Father testified about His only begotten Son. The Holy Ghost affirmed about the very Son of God. The same thing in everything He did, in all the places He went, in all the families He touched, in all the people He saved. He has done all things well. The sick rejoiced. And their friends and neighbors rejoiced and confirmed with them. And why were they rejoicing? Because he has done all things well. The disciples observed, even the Pharisees and Caiaphas, and they all whispered, he has done all things well. All through past generations, until this generation, the testimony is still the same. Because Christ has not changed, the testimony has not changed. What's the testimony today? He has done all things well. All who have had any real encounter with him upon testifying and upon touching him and he touching them, the thing was uniform with everybody. He has done all things well. As you connect with the Lord tonight, as you reconcile with the Almighty God tonight, as you look at the scriptures tonight, as you hold on to the promises of God tonight, and as you say everything Christ has provided, everything Christ has done is for who? For me. And you know that is for you. And you plug in who? For me. And you know that is for you. And you plug into that. At the end, something will come out of your mouth. Talking about Jesus tonight, the unchangeable Christ. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the one that saves, and the one that heals, and the one that delivers. The unchangeable Christ still doing all things well. That's what we're looking at tonight, the unchangeable Christ still doing all things well. And tonight is still active and alive. The risen Christ, the mighty Christ, the omnipotent Christ, and the omnipresent Christ that is with you right there. That thing that you call incurable will be killed tonight. That thing you call impossible will be possible tonight. And it will wipe away your tears. He will break every yoke. He will do all things well. I, I, can, I can almost see you while you are going back home tonight. Song in your mouth. Joy in your heart. And everything that is gloomy and dark, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. And as I follow you to your house and you enter your house like this, you announce to the people you meet at home, He has done all things well. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. The unchangeable Christ still doing all things well. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one, the perseverance of a gentile with great faith. The first person that came to Christ, 
She came knowing I will not go back empty handed. She came knowing I'm going to get something from Christ tonight. She came knowing that her great faith will not be disappointed. Point number one, the perseverance of a gentile with great faith. Point number two, the promise of God and its fulfillment. What God had promised, what God had provided, and what God had pronounced. And he had said, this is what I will do as we look at the second part of the story, the fulfillment came. No disappointment in your life? Yeah. Expectation in your life? Yeah. Fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. The promise of God and its fulfillment. Now point number three, the perception of his greatness and finality. The perception of the people that came to Christ, of the people that touched Christ, of the people that connected with Christ, they perceived his greatness. Nothing was impossible for him. They perceived his greatness. He did everything well, and he became the final authority in their lives. All the people that tried to help them, they had tried and failed. The physicians had failed, and the helpers had failed. And when they came to him as the final authority, he put a finality and a final stop to every problem of their lives. Finality tonight. Yeah. I said finality tonight. Yeah. You don't have to go on in your life crying. And you don't have to go on in your life as if you are an unfortunate person. Christ is there. And whenever we come to Christ, he brings a finality. Yeah. The perception of his greatness and the finality. Let's come back to point number one. Is the perseverance of a Gentile with great faith. I'm coming back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit had of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, that's a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. I want you to understand, the daughter was not there. The Lord does not need a physical contact before that blessing can pass on to you. Even at a distance, even while you are far away watching, where you are watching now, as the word comes forth and the name of Christ comes forth, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And so she came alone. She didn't bring the child. Maybe the child was too violent or so troubled and traumatic so that she could not bring that girl. But all the same power will touch her where she is. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Understand what Jesus was saying? He said, the children of Israel, they were the children of the kingdom, and the promises and the provision belonged unto them. The Gentiles were like dogs, and it was not try right to give the children's bread unto dogs. What Jesus said was true. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Gentiles have sinned further and they have made themselves dogs, unclean, unacceptable in the sight of the Almighty God. And so Jesus told the truth. And the woman understood the truth. And the woman did not say, do you mean I'm a dog? Do you mean I'm not acceptable? Do you mean I'm a rejected Gentile? Okay, if that's the way uh, Jesus feels and he is accommodating all the ideas of the Jewish people. Bye-bye. I don't have anything to do with you. That woman was wise. You'll be a wise woman. You'll be a wise man. And what you have come for, if you are wise and you keep staying, you will get. Look at, look at verse 28. And she said... And she answered and said, yes, Lord. Don't ever contradict the Lord, whatever he says. He says you're a sinner. Yes, Lord. He says you're unclean. Yes, Lord. 
It says you are not qualified by yourself to enter the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. It says you are powerless. It says you are impotent. And it says all oh, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Don't argue. Yes, Lord. Somebody there say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She said, Yes, Lord. And then, but she didn't stop there yet. The dogs under the table each of the children's crumbs wonderful that's wisdom the lord will give you wisdom yeah. the wisdom to pray the wisdom to ask the lord and the wisdom to demand what you need and it will be given unto you look at verse 29 and he said unto her for this saying for this saying go thy way the devil is gone out of thy daughter. For that sin, for the proper prayer and for the proper answer, that devil is gone from the daughter. And then it says in verse 30, and when she came, when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. That's what you'll find. I said that's what you'll find. And her daughter laid upon the bed. Let me read a full account to you in Matthew chapter 15. The same story, but Matthew writes with some details. You know, Matthew was a tax collector and he used to keep records and he wrote everything and has given us the details here. As I look at the detail, I'm going to divide this into three subtitles. Number one, the prayer for great favor. The prayer for great favor. What the woman came for was not a small thing. It was something that no physician in South Phoenicia, in her own gentile community, could do for her. It was a great favor. It was something that not even a Jewish priest could do for her a great favor. Just one person in the whole of the land, and his name is Jesus. His name is Savior. His name is Redeemer. His name is Deliverer. Just that one person could do this for her, the prayer for great favor. There's a second part to this. Number two, her perseverance with great fervency. She didn't allow her fervency to cool down, her faith to cool down, her prayer to cool down, her request to cool down, her perseverance with great fervency, and then the power of great faith. The power of great faith. Faith will never fail. And if you have faith in Christ tonight, I shouldn't say if, I should say since you have faith in Christ tonight, all things are possible. Look at the first part here. I'm reading from chapter 15 of Matthew, verse 22. The prayer, the plea for great favor. Look at verse 22 here. And, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. You know, some people are easily discouraged. Some people are easily annoyed. And they feel, what kind of insult is this? I came all the way from the coast of, of uh, Sidon, and I'm pleading, thou son of David, I'm not asking you, Peter, I'm not asking you, John, I'm not asking you, James, I'm asking the Lord, and it's the Lord for all, it's Lord for everyone, he's the son of God, and he's son of David, and he is not only for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles, even the Old Testament said so, and I'm asking the Lord, and you are telling the Lord to send me away. All right, if that's your attitude, take your Jesus and monopolize him. Take your Jesus and do anything you want to do with him. Bye-bye, I'm going. Some people, they wear their temper on their sleeves. 
and easily annoyed. But this woman said, no, I came for something. I'm going to get what I came for. I came for something tonight, somebody there. And I'm going to get what I came for. And whatever the attitude of the people around, whatever the attitude of the people who are close to the Lord Jesus Christ in the physical, it's not going to discourage you. It's not going to put you off. You will receive. Somebody there said, you will receive. And then look at verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not saint, but unto the house of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That woman heard that. But he that said she, not, she did not hear. Verse 25. And she, and she came. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord. He still called him Lord. He said, you are Lord. He said, you are master. Whatever you are saying, you are saying out of your divinity out of your sovereign I accept that completely and then she said Lord help me he will help you tonight yeah. and he answered and said it is not me it is not right even if I wanted to do it how can I do it it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs uh, that's a test of her faith you will pass the test. You will not go back home empty-handed. You will not say, I'm annoyed. You will not say, I'm angry. You will not say, I'm disappointed. So that's the way they are. All those disciples near Christ, even Christ himself, look at what he's telling me, the prayer for great favor. As you come and you say, Lord, I will not be left out, you will not be left out. He will answer your prayer. Amen. All right, he will answer my prayer. Hey, look, at, look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew, I'm reading to you from verse 17, and I'm reading from verse 15. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 15. In verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed, and of times he falls into the fire and out into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Here is another case of a man pleading, of a man praying, of a man asking. The, the Lord Jesus had gone to the Mount of Transfiguration and he went with Peter, James, and John. And the rest of the disciples, nine of them remaining, they were there. And the man brought his son unto them. And he said, Don't you have power? Have you not received? Has he not delegated his authority and power unto you? All right, here is my boy, here is my only son. Help me and cast the devil out. And they could not. And the man did not say, okay, I'm going home. Maybe it's not the will of God. Maybe this is my destiny. Maybe this is what God wants for me. God does not want evil for you. If nine disciples, if nine apostles have tried and the problem is not solved, wait, don't go. A solution is coming your way. It look at verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither unto me. The solution is coming nearer. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. The child was cured from that very hour. He will repeat that in your life today. The second thing I want to point out here, in the case of this woman, is her perseverance with great fervency. Her perseverance with great fervency. Let's come back to that Matthew chapter 15. The same story. 
but he's telling us some detail, giving us some details here. Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 24. In verse 24, and he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she after Jesus had said that. You see, there are some people, they're looking for the promises of God. Maybe I get this promise that will solve my problem. I get that promise that will solve my problem. The problem of sin in somebody's life. The problem of sickness in somebody's life. And the problem of evil spirit in somebody's life. And the problem of suffering in somebody's life. The problem of society heaping a lot of things on you. I'm looking for a promise and you cannot find a promise. And you ransack and you search all through the Bible and you cannot point your finger on this, the promise that addresses my problem. Look at this woman. The woman did not have any promise that she can lay hold on to. And Jesus said, you don't have your promise. You don't have your provision. What can I do for you? I'm not saying to only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And all the same she came. Such people will never be disappointed. The people who know that God created them. And because he's my creator, he must solve my problem. He mustn't create me for nothing. He mustn't create me for suffering. And the people that know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And he died for my sin. And he died to take the consequence of sin away. There must be solution to my problem. Solution to the problem of your family. Solution to the problem your personal life. Solution to the problem anywhere you find yourself. You may not be able to point at any particular promise, but all the same, if God is God, he will help you. If Jesus is the very son of God, he will help you. And so she came and she worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat, it is not right, it is not proper to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth Lord, I will never accuse the Lord of saying something wrong. Everything you say, my Lord, is true. Everything you say, my Lord, is factual. There are people that call Jesus Lord. And then they get angry at him. God, what are you looking at? Jesus, what are you looking at? Why have you done this? Why have you not done this? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And they accuse the Lord. They almost get to the border of blasphemy. And they say, hey, Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. But I cannot understand why this happened and why this happened and why that happened. And they accuse the Lord of being unfaithful and being unfair. How could this happen to me? I serve you. I came from my place and I come to you and I'm pleading what you do this and you are calling me dog. That cannot be true. You don't know my life. You don't know me. If you knew me, you will not say that. Stop all that argument. Jesus knows more about you than you know about yourself. Give me a good amen. amen. And the woman said, you are Lord and you are truthful. If you can say in your life anything happening, the rain falling, the storm roaring, and the mountains moving, and all in-laws are saying this and saying that, every accusation is coming to you, and they are saying, ah, she goes to deeper life, he goes to deeper life, but she, look at this and look at this, she is not, she is not clean, she is not all right. And then you go to Jesus and say, Jesus, why? You see Jesus making them to talk to you like that? No. So you just go to Jesus and worship him and say, Jesus, whatever they say, whatever they do, however they act, however they, they react, Jesus, you are my Lord. Somebody there, Jesus, you are my Lord. And Jesus, you're always truthful. You are not far from your miracle. Yeah. And so now, point in the, the third one here is the power of great faith. The power of great faith. The faith that will not let go. 
the faith that will not give up the faith that will not say okay maybe i don't have the luck today maybe i don't have the breakthrough today i'm going back home you will not go back empty-handed didn't you come for something get what you came for before you go don't go don't go remain until that scene from heaven drops upon your life and it is coming your way and look at it from verse 28 now then jesus answered and said unto her O woman great is thy faith O woman great is thy faith be it unto thee even as thou wilt what's what even some pharisees didn't get he got she got what some sadducees didn't get she got what some jewish people that they, they have the bread of the children what they didn't have she got it what other people have not got before you you will get O woman, O man, O boy, O girl, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This is your hour. Amen. This is your time. Amen. The Lord will not disappoint you. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Look at the ability of the Lord, and look at the strength of the Lord, and look at the power of the Lord. That thing that looks impossible has now become possible. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? Yeah. That worketh in you, in us, it will happen. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts of the wicked. How many fiery darts of the wicked are you going to quench? All. You are going to be free. I see free people in front of me today. Free and free indeed in Jesus' name. Let, let, let's come back now. Let's come back to Mark chapter 7. We're coming to point number 2. The promise of God and its fulfillment. I'm reading from Mark chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 31. Mark chapter 7. We're reading from verse 31. Look at this. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of, uh, of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, 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 and had an imp impediment in her speech. And they beseech him, they pleaded with him, they begged him, they prayed him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and his speech and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephesa, and that is be opened and straightway. That means immediately. That means instantaneously. That means that at that very time, what is the touch of the Lord in your life? Straightway, straightway now, immediately. It says straightway, his ears were opened. And the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spake plainly. And he spake plainly. You will speak plainly. Why did they know that they should bring a person like this unto Christ? What are they looking for? What motivated them? What engineered them? What prompted them? That a person had an impediment in the speech. A person could not hear. He was deaf. And then they brought him to Jesus. Why? Number one, the promise of the Almighty. The promise of the Almighty. 
And then number two, the possibilities of his authority. The possibilities of his authority. He had heard what he had done in other places. He said, if he did that there, he can do this here. If that happened in that other place, at that other shore, this one will happen here. If what we have heard that he did in Jerusalem, in Cana of Galilee, in Capernaum, and in Nazareth, all those places, those things he did there, he has the same authority and the same power, he will do it here. Number one, the promise of the Almighty. Number two, the possibilities in his authority. Number three, the publicity after their astonishment. The publicity after their astonishment. Number one, what promise were they standing on? What promise were they relying on? Look at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. It's good to study your Bible. And it's good to know the promises of God so that whenever a problem arises in your life, arises in your family, arises in your Christian life, you'll be able to say, according to the promise of the Almighty, I know that this problem will be solved. My problems are solved. Isaiah chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse uh, 4. Look at verse 4 here. Say to them, that of a fearful heart be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Amen. Even God with the recompense, he will come and save you. Amen. You see, you must know the promise of God that if you fell into a dungeon, if you fell into a pit, if you fell into sin, if you fell into evil, if you fell into shame, you must know the promise of God, he will come and save you. If you fall sick, you fall into sickness, you must know the promise of God, he will come and save you. If you fall into poverty and penury, you must understand there's a promise of God, he will come and save you. Now look at verse 5, look at verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Look at that. Look at the promise. This promise was talking away there, and those people didn't heal. Because of the promise of the Almighty, Christ is here. It's the fulfillment of that promise. Let's take uh, this person to him. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. That's why they came. That's why they came. They knew the promise was there. And because of that promise, that's why they came. The promise of the Almighty. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even in marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, in that day when I do the wonder, in that day when I bring the wonder worker, the miracle worker, in that day when I send my only begotten son, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see, you must know the promise of God. They knew the promise of the Almighty. That's why when Christ came, they said, He has come. The fulfillment of the promise has come. And this is our day. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. Out of darkness. That's all the amen you can give. Hey, look at look at this, look at this. I see chapter 32. I see chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. 
the heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge and the tongue of the stammerers that man they brought had impediment in his speech and here is a promise that have been waiting to be claimed there are many promises of the word of God waiting to be claimed you are going to claim them tonight and he said the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly ready to speak plainly the promise is going to be fulfilled in Jesus name and now we come to the possibilities of his authority the possibilities of his authority we're coming back to Mark and we're reading this time Mark chapter 2 Mark chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse uh, reading from verse 12 Mark chapter 2 we're looking at verse 12 and immediately he arose immediately somebody help me shout that word immediately yeah. when is your miracle tonight yeah. when is the touch of the Lord upon your life yeah. when will all that painful thing be rolled out of your life